Hi and welcome. This is part four for setting up always on three node multi subnet cluster on your own laptop. So let's get going. In this particular video, we'll talk about how to configure your laptop to boot with a new virtual hard disk, which will have Windows 10 installed in it, which will use it. So quickly, we'll cover how the GitHub repositories, right? And then we'll see what are the new files for to practice this particular session. You can download and then this folder structure you have seen last time. So we downloaded Windows Server 2019 evaluation, SQL Server 2019 evaluation, as well as SSMS, set up all the folders. Today you will see how to download Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation Edition and then set it up as your host Hyper-V VM. So that way you can basically run Hyper-V and create all the VMs we need for always on setup. So let's get going. As you can, you can see, I've logged into my laptop, which we'll be using for this configuration. Let's see our typical configuration. This is probably a typical laptop, which we'll get. Um, there's only some SDXC, some attachment is there, a USB drive, but there's only one C drive where all the folds, files are there. Uh, it could be, if it's a company laptop, I won't recommend do it, but it's a personal laptop. It's pretty safe to do what we are doing. Uh, basic idea is we're going to create a folder here and that folder will create a virtual file and then basically boot from that virtual file. So when you boot back in, you'll see a new drive show up here, which the C drive will become that D drive and there will be a new C drive with 128 gig of space, which you can play around. And it's just a VHD file. And if I go this, this is a VHD file. So that's what we want to create and then just boot from this file. So this file is 128 GB in size, as you can see. Let's start our partial script. As you know, you can go and get the video on YouTube you're watching anyway, but if you search for GitHub Prakash, you'll be able to get to my GitHub. And here, go to the last project, Test Hyper-V Lab. Here, if you go under script, you will see the part four is available now. Click on this. Here you can see, uh, we'll be using create Hyper-V host to create it and then add boot entry. This will create the boot entry to, for Windows to log on to that VHD file. And finally, we'll use configure Hyper-V host, right? At any point of the series, you can get into my blog and you'll be able to see all the videos we have uploaded. So you can see the part two as well as part one. When you go to any of the video series, not only you have the video for that particular part, you also have the related article in the same series. So this page will keep updating as and when the new videos are released. So as long as you are on the one page, you should be able to access the rest of the others. So let's open the PowerShell. So this machine has UAC controlled and this is like a secure machine, like everything. So what we're gonna do it, that's why we don't wanna touch it. So I'm gonna open, go open, go to the scripts, prepare for VND and first we'll configure, create Hyper-V host. Now to do that, we need to download a new file, right? So to do that, let's go to, back to the browser, search, search for Windows 10, Evaluation download. This will take you to Try Windows Ten Evaluation Center. Get here. Now here you want to select the ISO Enterprise option. Click Continue. Uh, enter your details as usual. So I'll be back on the screen once the details are entered. Once you enter the detail, next page will ask you to collect, select the version. Select as two bit language. I would pick English. Click download and it will download this file so we can see show in folder. So meanwhile, this file is getting downloaded. As you can see, I have pre-downloaded this file. So I will continue with that. Once the file is downloaded, you can see file is here. What you want to do is right click and say mount. So this will mount it here. A new drive will create it. You can see all the Windows files are there. Now let's go back to our script. Let's set the location. We 
get the C drive. Now we're creating a folder where we want to store it. At this point, I would suggest that use exact what you're seeing in this script. Uh, this is one of the dangerous part when you're adding the boot entry. Basically, if you make a mistake there, you may not be able to boot to your laptop. So I would suggest you use literally the commands. I purposefully write down everything. So there is no mistake in terms of, you know, letters are here and there. So we are setting a target VHD folder, right? So let's run selection. We are setting a Windows image file. So this is the file which is available in this folder. We need that to get some information, which I'll show you just now. And we can see, check, this is the location, see the E drive. This is where we mounted the drive folder. So it's E here. Uh, change if it is different in your case. So you did that. Now last is that we are populating the drive without letter. So if I run it and now you can see it's only giving us the path we need. It removed, just remove the C drive in it and it's boot VHD. So this is how we need to make it work in future. So now we'll use disk management.msc to configure our VHD drive. Look like that. Go to view. Sorry. Ah, sorry. Um, create VHD. You'll put a browse. By now we have created the folder. So let's go to that folder. Select this one. And we want to give this file name also W10. I, so as you can see, double. W10 VHD, it is VHD. So change the option to VHDX. That should look good. Click save. Here you'll be selecting site, change it to 128GB. This is all the space we need to create five different VMs. Uh, set up as a router, set up as a domain controller, and the other three for, you know, testing, actually four for testing three node always on setup plus an app server. So that's what 128 gig is more than enough. Change it to VHDX because we want dynamically expanding. You can go with fixed size, but then you have to make some changes. For this demo purpose, I would suggest you go with that. Later on, you can try it on your own and change things and do what you feel is right. All right, so we created, as you can see, a new folder is being created. So right click on that, select that, right click, say initialize disk, select the defaults, right click, new simple volume, next, next. In this case, I always pick the P drive in my example. For this example, use P drive. It will be simple because next commands will run. You'll put Windows 10 demo, quick perform format, then next, and that's about it. So we just created a drive, which is, you know, logged in as a P drive in this case. It's an empty. Now get back to the command here. So we'll create a command, the install image file, this one. We are providing the Windows source folder, which is E drive in this case. And we are asking that for this location, check it and give me which version of Windows are installed. If you're using Enterprise Edition, you evaluation one, the one downloaded, you'll find there's only one uh, image is available. If you have other Windows versions, then probably you'll see different numbers and you can pick. For this demo purpose, I would say go with uh, what we have. As I said, uh, this is the risky bit when you're making a boot entry changes if you're comfortable with that yeah you can do all that so here i come i picked the index number one and i supplied it here destination is p drive and we are gonna run this command now this command is applying windows 10 enterprise edition to p drive this may take up to 15 minutes then let's quickly take a look so you can see the files start getting copying here once it's done We'll be back. Come back. So once it's done, come back. We'll start disk management again. 
folder this is the p drive we created right click on that and say detach vsd and copy this location just in case you have not click ok good so at this point we have created a vhd which has windows 10 boot built into it now all we have to do is to boot from it so to boot from it we'll open the next script add boot entry it's in the same location here, first thing I would like to do is to take a backup of my current boot setup. To do that, I'll run this command. If I execute it, you can see in my current drive, there is a C drive and it's booting description is the name of the volume, which you'll see into the bootloader is Windows 10. And it's booting from C slash Windows, right? So. If I go one level up, we can see there is a default setting to boot from the first hard disk. Okay, so that's all we have here. Uh, we want to add one more entry here and that's what we'll do. But before we do that, we want to back up this particular data so that in case something doesn't go right, we can go back and import it like this sort of import command. So I give it a name. 912 let's change it today's name 913 put it into a variable we can set up the export and the file is exported and next to commands I purposefully mention it so you want to copy this import command save it somewhere here replace it with this file so that in case thing doesn't go right you can come back and you can uh, restore it uh, but remember if you mess up something here and this particular part your laptop will not boot and then there is a very Long process to basically, you know Reset your boot entries and set it up. So be careful what you do here as long as you're following this article You should not get much problem But uh, if something happens don't hold me responsible. It's do it at your own risk so we are setting up one XML file. We are defining that this is the boot entry for C drive. This is the path where we just created the VHDX file. And this is the name we want to see this file to have. I'll put it into a variable. We already saw the execution of that. Currently there is only one entry. So this is a pretty simple machine. That's how we expect it to be. Now we are using the XML setting and we are loading this file, converting it to an XML. Next, we are finding the boot entry, the boot drive, the path, and the description. And finally, we are creating the VHD drive. So this is the part, this Windows, what you saw here, this is what we are creating in this process. So I'm gonna run that. This will populate these variables. Now let's validate this variable. When you run it, you can see C drive, path, the name of the boot volume, as well as the name it will show up here make sure that you're not missing anything here just validate really date just make sure everything is good okay now boot entry copy we are running a bc edit command which is basically copying the current entry current entry is the last one the windows one and changing the right description with it Plus, then we are creating a CLS ID. So let's copy that. So we can see the boot entry is copied. Let's review it. Successfully copied. So this is the new ID we got from it. Now we say boot entry copy for each object. We want to remove the, give it a different GUID, right? So this thing we want to be changed uh, so that we are making a copy of the current boot entry and then changing it. We did that. Now set, we want to set device to boot with VHD, the values we did there, class ID, OS device, and detach all. So I'll run all three. This will create our boot entry. Just to validate everything is right, you'll run the entry again, and now you can see the entry we just created is visible here. Okay, when you're booting it, at this point, if something 
uh, is wrong in the way you provided the drive letter and path, then I will give you a choice to basically boot from the existing operating system, right? Um, that's why it's still okay. If it doesn't boot up, you may have to figure it out. But as long as you're following the exact steps I'm def defining here in this demo, you should be good. There should not be a reason it won't boot up. Um, just so you know, uh, this particular system is not even running Windows 10 Pro Edition. This is purely a Windows 10 Home Edition. And that's one of the reason I'm using the um, Chrome Remote Desktop to basically boot into my laptop and do this presentation. So you can see this is laptop, 16 GB RAM, and it's running Windows 10, um, Windows 10 Home. And so this is the vanilla uh, operating system you'll have no matter what. So these steps are all valid if you're running Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise or any other version of Windows 10. Most probably will work on Windows 8, but I have not tested it. So we check the entry is there. And if I go a little bit up, we can see the previous entry, what we copied it from. Um, here you can see the recovery sequence and resume object. That's what we wanted to make sure that change identifier is from current to this has been modified. Okay, so we're good. At this point, we are ready to boot. I would say close the file. file. And when you do the boot this time, you should be seeing uh, the boot entry for the next drive. Click select on it and keep going next and that will give you an option to set up a plain Windows 10 which I will just show you in a bit. As you can see I'm, I have created another VM VHD so we can record these screens which you'll be seeing in your laptop. So this is a demo rise and another VM I created so could show you these steps. Okay. So at this point you can see we are booting it from the new VHD and we'll be getting a setting for select United States I'm in US so pick that uh, pick whatever is suitable in your case I'll be using the test values for suitable to me so make any changes needed here click US I'll skip second keyboard it says connect to the network I will say at this point I'm saying I do not have internet limited setup uh, since I'm not connected internet there's an option to add domain join this is a test VM so I would suggest you use this option this is better I will use HV admin as the login for the system Password, which we'll be using all over the series for all the VMs would be the same called 60s plus one exclamation. One exclamation sign. This will be working throughout the demo. As I said, this is not the best security practices involved in this demo setup. All we want to learn is how it works, how easily we can configure the whole setup. And then when you go to the production, there will be a separate set of changes you need to make, which if you guys are really interested, ping me in the comments and I'll set up a next one video just to cover the best practices in production. Let's confirm the password. Uh, three security questions. Uh, give your answers to them. I'm not interested in recovering this VM as I can create it again as and when needed. So test VM. So we keep going. This accept is fine. I don't want to sync across history. I don't want to need Cartoona. This is a test VM purely for Hyper-V. Um, so we'll go with the minimum fuss. So at this point, device is getting ready. Um, it may take some time for the laptop to to get ready this video as well as the series which we are working on preparing the end-to-end -end steps to get to the three node multi subnet always on uh, please subscribe and make sure that you're getting the latest updates whenever i'm releasing the new video unlike the video